I'd like to welcome to the show today. I have Anders from In Flames. Welcome, Anders. Thank you very much, man. Thank you. <laughs> Abs- you have brought in the background too, making That's coffee. Right. But... That's good. Coffee yeah. good. I like coffee. I'll have it's one. So <laughs> very necessary, actually. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, well, like I say, first of all, thank you for doing this. Uh, I really appreciate yeah. it. Um, well, I mean, so we're here today to mainly talk about your forthcoming album. Um, yes. it's called uh, Forgone or Forgone, sorry. Yes. Uh, it's out on Nuclear Blast uh, February 10th, 2023. So, a couple of months from now. Um, yeah, I've actually been quite lucky. Uh, the people at Nuclear Blast have actually let me listen to the album. And oh, first and foremost, I love it. <laughs> oh, no, right. It's really you, cool. I was like, click, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's no, it. It's done. No, I'm just um. <laughs> um I know. I mean, the the songs that people can hear right now are really good. So you've got um, uh, was it State of Slow Decay? Um, yeah. Got, uh, Great Deceiver. Yeah. Forgone one and two. And Forgone one and two. Yeah. So people can go and stream that now on whatever format they like to stream things on, uh, as it's that time of year of the Spotify Wrapped. I'm sure it's Spotify on that front. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um. No. I mean. Fa- I mean. The album's fantastic. Um. And obviously, I just want to sort of dig a little bit into that. But um. Well, let's see first. It's just sort of like I've been a fan of your band for so long. Um, I was quite fortunate to see you. I want to say it was this year. Uh, you played Brighton in England. Yeah. You played the yeah. Concert. That was I think that was the first show after COVID, like our first yeah. show. Yeah. Um, yeah, because we had tickets for it. Um, me and my wife, I should say, had tickets for that uh, before it got postponed because of. COVID. Yeah. 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 yeah um so we were really looking forward to it and, and then when you re-net, like re rescheduled it um it was it was a great gig i mean it was it was great seeing you guys on a because i've seen you on big stages yeah past like festivals and all that kind of stuff and um seeing you on that sort of size stage it was brilliant it, like the atmosphere the sound um it was it was like everything i wanted it to be <laughs> that's, 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 i love those intimate clubs you know but that particular show i barely don't remember because it was just such a the feeling of being back in a room with the guys and with the fans and it was just it was almost too much you know too much to bear (laughs) yeah yeah i agree i mean that was our i think that was our first show post covid like first going out like properly you know yeah amongst amongst the masses if you will and um yeah yeah, it was a little weird. It was a little overwhelming, like from from a like fan point of view, um, just being. But around it, I think it was just yeah, overwhelming, weird. It was just like this sent great fucking feeling of being back together. That's, yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, that was the great thing as well, like being back live music yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And it was just yeah. Um, no, I just yeah. want to a big, big like a big uh, sort of like you know, big up on that front, <laughs> if you will, because that was uh, it was a great show. It was great to see you guys sort of back on the road as well. And hearing all those songs as well, like it was pretty much yeah. every song I wanted to hear. <laughs> On like, if you were to put a great oh. together, so. Um, left happy then. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean my my sort of fandom. I just I'll talk about myself here, but um, going back, it goes back about twenty years. Uh, I think when you released Clayman, um, and I was in a band. Right. At, yeah, I was in a band at the time. And we were sort of doing the rounds in the UK and we had our songs on um, various cover CDs for various magazines and things. And our songs seemed to share the same cover CDs as your one. So like Pinball Map um, and um, I think uh, Take Take This Life as well um, were all on those CDs. So like, and, and like obviously listening to those CDs with skipping my band, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, just sort of going back then and like like just being a fan since then. So I've got all your albums since then, um, as well. And uh yeah, no, it's just it like this it's just like I say, great to speak to you. But it was just like it was weird how this kind of comes around for me anyway. Like, um, just sort of getting to speak to a band that's still going, twenty years on. Um, yeah, we're still doing it. <laughs> yeah, still doing it. Uh unfortunately I'm not, but it's you know, that's a different story. Um <laughs> But um no, I was just like getting getting onto your latest album, um um for for gone. And um yeah, I mean sort of the tracks that people are I really love the foregone part one and two um track that or tracks that you did. Um yeah. 
what were the sort of i mean what's the sort of like the the is there like a sort of general theme around the album that you're trying to go for because obviously you're breaking uh, the track into two was that originally like one big long track or is that kind of like just two separate sides of it no it was actually supposed to be a three track I love oh. um but uh, yeah um I, I i mean the overall theme if you could call it a theme uh lyrically would be dealing with time and what we do with time because the covid the 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 pause we had i because being in a band you you um you're like you write and record you release an album and you go on tour and you expect everyone to be there all the time you know and you 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 uh you kind of take people for granted i think uh or i i, I feel um can't speak for other bands of course but you know and and, and you realize it's not there anymore and that, that it's makes you realize you should not take things for granted because who know we didn't know how long covid would take we didn't know how long this break would would be and something i feel right now you know i i i want to live in the moment i want to be right here where i am and every show could be your last that's how how i feel you know so i'm extremely grateful that people are coming out you know to see listen to us you know um so well the particular for gone was supposed to be a, a a th- a th- divided into three but then we took some riffs for some other things and then it got di- into two a uh, two part but they all they both are related um both lyrically and musically because there are certain riffs that are coming back in both songs in a certain way mm. um and i think it turned out really good and they have a certain dynamic that i really love between the songs and to me it has a uh, um when I listen to tracks like Moonshield from the Gesture, Gesture Race, Gyroscope from Oracle, I, we have this folky S- Swedish vibe, which I think it's you can find in, in these tracks as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you, you've had, um, like, you're, you're a band of, of, of bringing in various sort of um, musicians to work with you over the years. Um, sort of people like you have I, I don't know how it works for you guys but you have guys coming in and out of the band when during the recording process uh, during live um, things so I mean obviously yourself um, Bjorn are the sort of main I guess the main sort of songwriters if you will obviously lyrics and stuff yeah we are, we are right we are writing the music uh, and lyrics and melodies and all that stuff the bulk of uh, of everything but then uh, Bryce who played bass and Tanner who played drums and Chris uh, Broderick who you just yes. saw here making coffee they all contribute when it comes to the studio and add their talent and, and their vibe to it and it wouldn't sound this, the same without them you know and, and I don't want to we've had a lot of lineup changes through the years uh, and they all been you know hopefully you know it's, it's everybody contributes to the music in their way and i want to i don't want to put any shadow of anyone who have ever been in a band but where we are right now i i think we really solidified our sound and it, it, it never sounded better yeah. then it, then it's just a matter of it and it's just a matter of taste of course and you you can't say someone is wrong with with their taste you know whatever you like you like uh but the feeling and the vibe of the band now is really good that's good and um i hope people hear it on this album and that the, the level of musicianship is really good. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, like I said, I was lucky enough to hear it and, and it's, it's, just, it's like musically absolutely solid. Like I think in flame fans are going to love it on that front. Um, the main thing is I brought up like the sort of members and stuff. It's just sort of like over the years, cause you kind of adapted your sounds. You've worked with a lot of different artists as well. Um, going back to like, you did a collaboration with pendulum um with self versus self back oh god that must have been about 10 five ten years ago uh, <laughs> wow that, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like just sort of like developing your sound over the years and stuff because i've i've like i said i've followed you guys for a while and you've you've always had a kind of like um obviously that sort of there is a sort of like swedish kind of metal sound if you will um but you've also thrown in all the sort of like synthesizers electronic sound stuff like that to really kind of bolster that sound and I was just curious, like whether you was mm-hmm. a 
thing bringing in various different people like when you record and stuff because i know you have like live musicians and stuff like that sometimes filling in and i just want like how they contribute to the sound that you kind of obviously you have an idea of what you want but you know those other i mean people... we are we we are a band in flames are the five members it's yeah. chris tan rice Bjorn and myself I mean and Bryce been in the band for six years and Tanner for five years and Chris now since the first uh when we started playing live for I the Mask so we've been a band now for quite a bit this this lineup yeah. and yeah people people leaving and go going for different reasons and, and that's it but when it comes to writing these days it's Bjorn and myself that okay. write the music uh we tried on um, like battles we because we had a new management and new producer and and we decided to uh not always say no all the time actually say yes once in a while so when they they said you should try to write with other people and see what that will bring to the table we said okay let's try it but i don't think that's now in hindsight i know that's not for us i don't think it benefit our music uh but it's a good experience it's you know it's uh, something that you it's good to go through so you know what's what's right for you you know yeah no exactly exactly so, so I, don't, I don't i don't regret it at all but the lineup that's on this album that's in flames you know? that's that's the guys in the band nice excellent excellent uh, well, i was gonna say my favorite track off the album because people haven't heard this one yet but um pure light of mind um really like that track yeah um and um yeah, the, the other ones I did like was, was Foregone Part 1 and 2. Those are my sort of like standout tracks, but I really like the yeah. Light of Mind um, on that front. And it is. Uh, yeah, I think that, that really epic live, you know. And yeah. when we write the music, we think about how they will sound in a live environment. Uh, and uh, so that that's important to us. Um, but yeah, it's that, that song turned out great. Um, and then. And, uh, tried some new things uh, but at the same time we've done a bunch of those type of slow bombastic songs and um i, I feel this this song was very necessary for the album yeah no it's, i mean it's it like i said the album takes you different directions as well so it's not it's not just sort of you know like you say full on i mean you've always kind of done it you've always had those epic songs um but yeah I'm, I'm yeah yeah they, they... so hearing these live so it is a lot of thought that that goes into creating the the, the track list too. You know, I, I want it to be dynamic. I want it to you as a listener. I want you to next one, next one, next one. And when you get to end the transmission, it's done. You want to listen to it again. <laughs> like yeah. like it has that 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 vibe and that feeling. You know. No, that's good because a lot of bands these days that I have found that they're they there's a lot of talk of well, they've been doing it for a while, but like concentrating on single releases so yeah it's gone back to the kind of pop music days of of releasing like the track with the hook um but then because obviously there's a different way of marketing music these days with the viral sort of side of things and you know the various social platforms that you can utilize music on but um there's a lot of bands now talking about oh we're just going to release singles we're just going to release you know periodic singles over the year so you'll get maybe get like five six tracks over the year every couple of months um and hearing like you say like you, you wanted to write an album that kind of well i say just an album that tells the story and you want to go again and you want to go back around again um that's yeah. it's actually weirdly refreshing to hear um <laughs> as weird as that is but um as weird, i didn't think i'd be saying it at this point but yeah it's 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 quite nice to hear yeah. that in that respect yeah i mean that's how i grew up though i mean that's how i listen to music i want to I, I, I mean, I understand. Uh, I mean, you have to adapt to, to the situation we're in. And I understand a lot of people listen to stream stuff and you listen to 15 seconds of a song and say, that's not for me, move on and so on. But that's not, you can't judge an artist in 15 seconds. You got to give him time, you know. Uh, and uh, I, um, I, I, yeah, we'll see. I mean, who knows what's going to happen in the future? But I, for me, it's the album is extremely important. That's how I want to present this band, at least. Uh, and what other do that? That that's fine. And I can, in 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 a way, and I we work as hard on 
one song as the next song as a 13th song, whatever. Mm. And you work on an album and maybe the 13th songs doesn't get as, as much exposure as you would like, you know, because it's last. But whatever, we just like, for me, the album is important. So I, I get why some people just want to release singles because uh, you can be, can be constantly, um, 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 yeah, whatever. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what to say, but yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all right. <laughs> like, yeah, whatever. Well, that's, cool. that's, not, that's not for us, at least. You know? No, I mean, it's, it's something that I try to sort of like, I, I mean, I get it from a certain point of view, but I, I really prefer the album. Um, like the, the, the format of that, of, of telling, you know, if there is a story running through it, telling a story um, through it, or, or just having the sort of series of events link up onto one sort of yeah and that's a reason too we we decided to release the album next year i mean it's done it was done in april you know okay but the lead the lead time for vinyls these days are crazy it yeah. take you six months from you send in the master to the when it's pressed and we could have released the uh, we're on tour right now like i'm, I'm in vienna today yeah. we're playing a show in a couple of hours um so we are we are on the either mass cycle, but I wanted when we release the album, I want to release the vinyl, I want to release the CD, I want to release the cassette on that day. I don't want yeah. people to have to wait for everything, you know, because yeah. I've, I've seen some others like they, oh, they release an album just to have it out, and then you have to wait five months to get the vinyl in your hand. But again, that's not how I want to present our music, you know. Here it is, boom, this is yours. Um, on the 10th of February. The music is not mine anymore. It's yours. Here you go. Here's everything, you know? Nice. So. No, that's really nice. Because like I say, there are a lot of bands that just want to get stuff out. Especially post-COVID. It was like, let's get this out. And then the format yeah. come later. Like even like the CD pressing yeah. was kind of delayed. So, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. you know, but uh, it was like, kind of that's that's like where I like to own sort of physical product, if you will. Like old school like that, if you want to think of it like that. Yeah. You see, I got the turntable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but so that was so cool with this genre like the metal fans are very supported and very you know they they want to have the physical thing you know? yeah. yeah definitely well um i've got a couple of questions left for you if that's all right if we've got time i'm just looking at the time yeah yeah cool excellent well um these are more sort of more about yourself um so what i want to do is my kind of like uh end of questions if you will to tail off the uh, podcast but um what are your um three albums that are most pivotal to you so the one that kind of made you want to be in a band maybe or the one that got you into music or got you you know or something that a particular time of your life you heard this album and it kind of changed something within you can you kind of pick three if you if you can <laughs> you can get my top 100 <laughs> like, uh, I, it's difficult to narrow it down to three uh the band i got into when i was 10 was scorpions that was my entry point to hard rock and heavy metal and then i really fast got into iron maiden and judas priest and accept and all that stuff and it just got heavier and heavier and i i, I found metallica and you know, Halloween and, and uh, Death came in and, you know, Morbid Angel and stuff like that. But Scorpions, without telling, saying album, Scorpions was the band that I got, that introduced me. Nice. Um, then uh, uh, I think, oh, I don't I don't know. I, I can mention a few. I think Master of Puppets was yeah. very important. I heard Metallica on Ride the Lightning when Master of Puppets was, that's for me, that's the ground zero of, of Metallica for me. Cool. Uh, so that album is it, very important. Um, Alice in Chains, Dirt is another one, which I think is a masterpiece. And the obviously uh, the music is fen phenomenal. The vocal harmonies between Jerry and Lane are amazing, but Lane's um, lyrical approach and what he, how he described darkness in such a beautiful way, had a huge impact on me nice. um, lyrically. Um, and Ninety Snails' Downward Spiral as well is something that's important. But then it's like 
again, I can say a hundred albums, like, you know, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's just Altars of Madness, Morbid Angel, another one. Yeah. You know, it's, I did so many albums, so many albums. Yeah. No, that's why I, that's why I always kind of like ask for three, because I know a lot of people have many, but no, those are three solid. Like, I mean, you've got, um, I've seen Metallica, everyone knows Metallica, Metallica or Metallica. Um, but uh, that that uh, Alice in Chains album, you're right, is it is amazing. Like just the 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 arrangements, the and just on a songwriting level, it is absolutely superb. Um, yeah, and it's very very dark. Yeah, very dark. It is. Um, and Nine Inch Nails, Downward Spiral, fantastic album. Um, I love my industrial kind of like electronic crossover kind of sound. So that's sort of one of the sort of like um, yeah. yeah. You know that one of the holy albums, if you will, on that front. Um, anything yeah. by like Trent. Trent, Trent Reznor is to me. It's a. Uh, it's like one of my heroes when it comes to you know songwriting and production and the way he just the, the sounds that he makes. And I would fucking love to be a fly on the wall in the studio and to see how it's done. You know, that would be awesome, wouldn't it? <laughs> and he's done very well for himself as well like just just from coming from you wouldn't expect coming from a band like nine inch nails to being you know an oscar winner really for soundtracks and stuff it's it's quite yeah. quite a track yeah. you know along those lines and uh it was, it's always baffling for me like to sort of see that from seeing him like just covered in dirt very minimal mud. clothing on stage <laughs> mud on stage screaming about you know whatever but and then finding out he's just won an Oscar, it was very bizarre. Uh, <laughs> but you know, it's all part of the talent of that front, isn't it? So um, yeah. But what are your um, my final question for you, um, what are your hobbies away from music? So when you're not creating things for Inflames and things like that, what do you kind of do to kind of I don't know unwind or you know something that you get to get away from it if you need to or anything away from the sort of music industry. I don't like I don't want to get away from music but I I'm, sometimes I want to get away from being Anderson in flames but uh, I during covid I I built a studio in my house and I bought a lot of analog synths and I started creating music nice. um just like a soundscape more more, more like a, a soundtrack music ish yeah. or vibe music atmospheric music and that it's very nice. I like makes me calm and 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 I I don't have to write lyrics I can just paint word with sounds instead you know yeah. so that's an escape for sure uh, i love cook i love cooking food so I, i'm i i um uh, i do that and then i mean the normal you know watching movies and hanging out with a family hanging out with friends that has nothing to do with the band you know like it being really chill you know well anders um thank you very much um yeah thank, thank you for having me and spending the time with me doing this and and answering my questions and whatnot it's been um, absolutely great to speak with you like i said i'm a massive fan of inflames for like over the last at least 20 years um <laughs> so it's been great to speak to you um but yeah good luck with the rest of your tour that you're on um good luck with the yeah. album due out next year i hope to see you in england next year i don't know if you've got any dates announced yet at all but or are you on any inf we have uh bloodstock Bloodstock, that was it. I knew I saw Bloodstock, as far as I could. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Well, I might be there next year. We'll see. But um, yeah. Yeah. anyway, um, like I say, good luck with the album. I look forward to everyone else hearing it. And uh, yeah, thank you for your time and have a good rest of your day. Yeah, thank you, man. Cheers, man. Thank you, mate. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.